that's my life, taking it back. I'm Simon Burt and I'm delighted to have been asked to conduct this fascinating interview with Stuart London and Charlotte Elizabeth about their artist-manager relationship, the trials, pitfalls and the successes, specifically how their special relationship has developed into being one of the most unique in the business. Hello both of you, Hello. lovely to see you again. I think we ought to start by going back in time. And where did you first meet? Uh, we met at a gig. The band Charlotte was managing at the time. Uh, we were supporting them uh, up in the northwest, and uh, we just got chatting and said hello. And it was pretty brief the first meeting. Yeah, just and, um, it. yeah. And then um, Charlotte was working on a songwriting project, mm. whereby she would get the songwriters to write, um, would, would record her songs that she'd written uh, for a project called Survive. And uh, I volunteered the song to do a song on the EP. So that's. We kind of that was very early on. Mm, that's interesting. So, songwriting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know where all that came from, to be fair, but um, I kind of threw myself into this project, and you know, I saw Stuart and the band performing this night, and I was just like, yeah, I'd really like to write with Stuart. And I think, you know, like, we, we didn't speak that much that night, and I sent him over some lyrics a couple of months later, maybe, but just chatted on Facebook for a little while, and sent him over some lyrics. He came back the same night with a demo. And I was wow. just like, well, we, this needs to be a single. <laughs> How fantastic. Yeah. And I suppose, because the next thing I was thinking was what made you decide to work together? I'm guessing that was kind of the key moment, was it? Uh, for sure, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think um, the, the song just, I don't know, he just came back so quick with it and it was just had such a hook in there. And I, was, and I wrote the lyrics really quickly for it as well. And I think it just all kind of fell together and, and it just worked really well. There's no kind of process to it. I was just like, that is the one. You know, when you just get a feeling, I was like, yeah, we need to release that. So, did Charlotte, did you offer to manage Stuart, or Stuart, did you say? I heard Charlotte asked to manage the band. At the time, I didn't really think, felt that we were ready for a manage, manager. Mm -hmm. I think that we were just starting out and getting, finding our feet as a band. And and then she put together the, the promo tour for the single. And I realised how organised she was and, and how, how well she put it together for the radio. And, I just thought this is the sort of person that we need on our side. So we had a brief chat and just said, look, if you're still looking to managers, then the office on the table, let's do it. You know, and that's, so it was pretty well. It wasn't a big meeting or a sort of a. No, I'm just know, helping. Just well. <laughs> 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 How long ago was that? Three years. Three years. Three years. Yeah. Three years. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's, and it's flourishing. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know your friends, mm -hmm. and you're often out socialising together. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm, I'm just interested about that dynamic and how that works. When it, 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 do you have two hats? Are you sort of Stuart and Charlotte friends, and then Stuart and Charlotte workmates, or does it all just all? It never felt like a business to us anyway. Um, I think that I like spending time with Charlotte. I like being in Charlotte's company, and I think vice versa, she likes you know being in mine. So I think that we just when we're out, we talk, we talk work all the time. You know, we're, we're mm -hmm. constantly talking about what we've got coming up, what else we can do to, to you know to, to make ourselves better what we do um, discussing shows or, or recordings or whatever whatever it is we always tend to be talking work anyway so but it's never really felt like a, a business partnership to me never yeah i agree you know, <laughs> sure <laughs> she'd probably like to be more business like sometimes <laughs> no i mean we like we never had a contract between us either which the industry just doesn't understand um, wow. But between us, because we built up that friendship and that trust and loyalty, we've never sat down and said, okay, we need a contract and this needs to be official. Because we both kind of know what's going on and what we both do for each other. So it's, it is a friendship, but it's never been anything where we've needed some formality from it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that you don't live that near each other, I know, not a million miles, but how does that impact on the relationship? Does you know, yeah, it doesn't. No? Yeah. We talk pretty much every day, whether it's just to say how you are today or whatever, just touch base. And sort of the days we talk four or five times in the day because we have things going on. Yeah. So, yeah. But like I say, it's just, uh, it's just, it, it just, it became, it grew organically for, for, for both of us. I think we never really set out with a plan mm. or what we could achieve. We just said, let's, let's see where it takes us. And, you know, we're still doing that today. Which is yeah, which is great, and I think. <sighs> Has that, as, as you say, it's developed over time. Was that something that you found as very different, Charlotte, when you came to sort of doing the managing of, of Stuart and the Angels in the first instance to maybe now how you do it? I don't, see, I was managing bands way before I was managing Stuart and the Angels, and this always felt a little bit different in mm. the sense that his professionalism and where he wanted to get to was always straight up from the beginning. I always knew that was his plan. And I think maybe people I've worked with in the past have never kind of been as committed. So I could say to Stuart, you're going to Scotland tomorrow. And he would go. Do you know what I mean? Because that's how committed he is. Or he would say to me... Or a beat. Yeah, or a beat. Yeah, I like that bit. We'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, he would say to me, you know, I need this meeting. And I'll go to London or I will fly off to LA and get that appointment. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. If that means we're going to get to where we need to be, then I'll do it. Yeah, I think you both, you have a commitment to each other to make sure that you hold your end of the bargain you know, I think that um, you could be the best manager in the world, but if your artist isn't prepared to work hard, then you know you're always going to be up against it, and, and vice versa. You could be the best artist in the world if your manager's not prepared to to run through walls for you. Then again, it's never going to work. So you have to kind of bring equal amounts to the to the table. I think. Yeah, and it does. It does more talking to you about it. It does seem very. It's a wonderful relationship because it's it's sort of multifaceted, multi-layered, isn't mm -hmm. it? I think yeah. No, I say you. You have that commitment to each other. You, you don't want you to be the person that lets the side down, mm. you know, because mm. you haven't done what you were supposed to have done. Yeah. And so there's, there's always that element in the relationship where if you've got a job to do, you have to make sure it's done. Mm. You know, and then so it's the next person to kind of do what they do. I suppose the, the question does: How important, Charlotte, is it that you like the music? Yeah, completely. I've got yeah. to. I, you know, that was the first thing that I heard, and the first thing that kind of drew me to them. So. I could never sell, I guess, as a product. I mm. couldn't sell something that I didn't believe in. So to me, they are the best band on the scene. They make the best music. I couldn't sell them the way I do if I didn't believe that. You can slip the 50 letters, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I suppose, interestingly, I, I, I wonder, social media. Mm. Blessing or a curse when it I comes think, to um, being an artist? A bit of both, I think. Mm. I think it has its uses, it has its, its, um, its benefits for promotion, but it also as well, it's, people tend to live in this world now, which is not real, and, you know, but it's great you can find out you know, about what's going on with, with bands and uh, whoever, you, whoever you follow on there. Um, but also as well, I think that it seems to me now the music scene is getting back to the way it used to be in the, in the 60s and 70s, bands tend to get on the road a bit more now, mm. you know, and gig it because there's no real money in record sales anymore. Mm. You know? everyone's streaming music so which is the way the world goes and you have to kind of roll the punches and, and, and accept it because it, it, it is the way the world is so you have to adapt to kind of live in that world mm. you know so so like i say social media is great for sort of promoting and if you've got a record coming out you can you can hit people 
thousands of people in the click of a button, which is, I think is great, you know. But it also it kind of stifles the world a little bit for me. Yeah. Charlotte, do you? Yeah, so you, from a manager's point of view, it's vital, you know, mm. because I've spoken to record labels and producers and, you know, a lot of people who are out there looking at the numbers side of things, mm. and that's kind of important for gigs and festivals. It's what everyone's looking at at the moment, so your Spotify numbers have to be up there, your Facebook followers have to be up there. And, you know, if someone's only got 500 followers, they kind of dismiss you straight away, whereas mm. if you've got a couple of hundred, it's like they won't even look, no, a couple of hundred, they won't even look and consider you off the book straight away. If you've got, you know, 10, 20, 30 thousand, that's when they start paying attention. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you know, they just don't want to know. So, from their point of view, the industry is always looking at figures. And I mean, I've had artists who are saying, you know, well, why have you not got on this gig or this festival? Because you've got the followers, but the followers aren't enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They, they really are drilling down on, on numbers. Because, I mean, one of my personal experiences is, it's, I think it's actually more about quality than quantity of followers. Is that something you'd? I mean, from an out, maybe from an outsider's perspective, not so much, but from a yeah. from a from a professional's point of view and, and using the page to promote and manage mm -hmm. the, 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 your work, I've found personally that it, that, that it is the quality of those that you've got following. Mm -hmm. right. I think yes, yeah, some some people that follow you will share. You know, it's, it's like when you see Facebook and people like the picture. Well, all you're telling me is that you've liked it. You know, yeah. You're not really spreading the word by liking no. something. You know, but sharing is a whole different ballgame yeah. because then all their followers get to see what you do. And I think that, like I said, it is numbers. It is because if, if somebody, if you put a show on, or puts a show on, puts a festival on, and, and they can hit 10,000 people in, again, one, yeah. you know, as opposed to 5,000 or 4,000. So it is, numbers are really important in the sense that for promotion, yeah. and for people seeing, 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 your, seeing your body of work as well. Yeah. Coming back to you, Charlotte. I'm told you're regularly referred to as one of the nicest people in the business. I don't that. <laughs> <laughs> I've met you twice, you know, you seem lovely. <laughs> um, and one to watch. Uh, was that the reputation you were going for in the first instance? No, probably no? not. It's, it's really strange to me because it was never anything, you know, I never went out there for I've got the nicest person in music because that's kind of not how you get business done. So. I don't know what everyone's seen, but I've never been one of those people who go out there and, you know, it's dog eat dog, but I've never been harsh in my approach. So mm. I mean, maybe that's what people have seen, is kind of, I've always gone in there a little bit quieter, but professional, know what I'm talking about. So maybe that's what's kind of sold it a little bit, but I've never been one of those who just go in and power through and, you know, bite people for the sake of it. Do you know what I mean? And a lot of people in business are hard, but I think I did a lot of work for Live Nation and a lot of work with Co Cobalt Publishing, mm. and they kind of picked up on that and made the comment, I think, in an interview. Um, one of the top execs from there made that comment, and it kind of spiralled, I think, people shared it, and they were like, yeah, she's really nice, but <laughs> I never went out there and thought, that's the kind of the reputation I need, I just wanted to come across professional and get the job done, so I'm not really sure where that came from. Shout I mean, I'm not hashtag, <laughs> the nicest person in the business. <laughs> I can see it there. <laughs> But I, I agree with you, I, I've never understood why business has to be so, mm -hmm. um, people barking orders at each other and that whole or sort of very autocratic, yeah. I, I've never understood it. I think yeah, you get yeah. much more out of people by actually just talking to people and yeah. getting on with people. I mean a lot of people do that and you know, they'll kind of stab you in the back and then mm. they're like, oh we never did that but that's not something I'm prepared to do and I know what battles I can fight and which ones I choose to do and I'll walk away from the ones that I don't think I can win which. I'm really stopping. <laughs> <laughs> Is she? <laughs> Says the voice of experience. <laughs> so what what would you say? Really matter because that's the way the music industry is, and I guess it'll always be that way. 
and there's a lot of maybe jealousy in there as well. So you've got people who aren't prepared to play the music because they don't either believe in you or they're jealous or they're backing someone else. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, it is what it is now. It I doesn't bother me as much. No, but I mean, I'm on the other end of it, obviously, because I present mm -hmm. radio shows. And it's interesting. I, I hate receiving music I don't like. Mm -hmm. Because then I've got to reply and say, I'm sorry, but it's not playlist. It's, it's difficult to say it's that. The, it's, the, it's, the, it's a horrible thing to have to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, like I say, the music business is it's a hard business. You, yeah. know, you, you and I have very early on. I've been in the business a little bit longer with Charlotte. So you have to have broad shoulders and thick skin. Mm. You, know, you, you have to adapt that mentality really, really quickly. Otherwise, because there are more no's than yeses. You know, all the time. Yeah. You know, so you have to kind of take that on the chin. I mean, I remember quite early on in our relationship, um, we were asked to play a festival, and uh, by the promoter, by the, and um, they, when it came around to the actual lineup being announced, we went on it. And so Charlotte called me up and says, you know, we've not made the cut for this festival. So okay, no problem. And I just took it as, as you always do, is we're not on, you know, we're not on the festival. So, mm. and then so she took it upon herself to email the festival and find out why and, and they came back with the thing and said something along the lines of you know they were on our radar, we were gonna book them and work with somebody else, you know, but I find this you know really offensive that you've questioned our um, you know our line or whatever wow. we choose to put on the festival. So Charlotte called me up and she was like really upset, you know, she said, you know, I've, 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 you know, I've really damaged you, you know, your, your reputation or whatever and I was like, no, 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 I said, I'm proud of it. Because I want my manager to, to question everything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Don't be upset. I'm, that's, like, you're actually doing your job. You know. So far from me to fall out, saying, well, you know, we could have got this gig, whatever. I, I was really proud of her that she stuck up for what we believe in. You know? yeah. so, and I think that just made us stronger as a team. You know, and the fact that I trust Charlotte to make decisions for me that, without even she to ask me, I trust her judgment 100%. And good on you for doing it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't know. Perfectly innocent question. If anybody did ever come back to me, I'd, I'd try and again be very, very nice. Yeah, saying, but I think, well, I think Charlotte players. went about that because she felt she took it personally. Mm. And I think in music you can't really take things personally because as an artist, not everyone's written artist songs. People probably hate them. You know, the people out there hate them. But I think that, but that's the way the world is. You know, we can't yeah. all like the same thing, which I fully accept. You know, and, and I think Charlotte just took that that one thing personally. And I think you know, but I think she learned from it the fact that you, know, you can't take it. If somebody says no, you say, okay, we'll move on to the next Yeah, thing. yeah, and you, you've got to, haven't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just the way it is, I suppose. Um, so, Stuart, uh, what challenges do you regularly have to overcome? And what does Charlotte do to help? Uh, keeping my band together is a challenge. I don't know, I just think the whole industry is difficult, you know, you've just got to kind of be, have you focus on what you're doing next and not try and look too far ahead into what you're doing, you know, I think that Charlotte will be planning ahead for me long before I will think about it. You know, like I say, my job is to meet deadlines with music and make sure that I give her the best product that I can. You know? mm. So we've got an album to finish and so I'm, I'm working on that at the minute. So, so my, my challenge is just to keep up Charlotte, I think, just to make sure that she has everything that she needs as and when she needs it, you know, because if she's agreed to meet somebody or has agreed to put a you know, single out and she's but, you know, it's on iTunes and it's ready for pre-release. I've got to make sure that everything's ready for those dates that she says. So, um, I wouldn't consider it a challenge. I just think it's just what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How far ahead do you plan that out of interest? I don't want to scare anyone. <laughs> um, probably two years. I have a two-year plan. I thought you weren't going to say months. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know what I'm doing next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so next year's pretty fully booked. We've, we've got next year sorted out, so I was planning that last year. I went to LA last year a couple of times um, to get what we've got in the diary. And the year after, I kind of know what we're doing yet. She doesn't know yet, but I kind of have a plan. She has this thing where she'll yeah. you just tell me enough, <laughs> and then I have to wait. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I hate that. She knows I hate it. She does it on purpose. I hate surprise. I just want to know everything that's going on. That's, I, I'm, I'm staggered. Sorry, I, I, that, that has really taken, taken me back. I, didn't, I really yeah. did not expect you to say two years. because it changes so much. Mm. It's, it's really difficult to just say, oh, I'll plan till the end of the year because, you know, festivals for next year are open now. So, yeah. you know, you want me in there first with the best music. If you've got a really strong single, that we've just released, taken it back. So that single needs to be kept in everyone's minds. Yeah. And be like, okay, we've just seen that single out. We've seen the figures for it. They need to be on next year. So... 
our album plan completely for the, this year, for festivals, for next year, international stuff coming up, European tours. It, yeah, it's non stop right now. Yeah. I think momentum is important as well, you know, in, in the industry. When you've got something going, you've got to keep keep the ball rolling. Yeah. You know, if you take, you take your foot off the gas a little bit, you kind of tend to lag behind. So it's, it's important to, to just keep in people's psyche and keep them in, 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 in their eye so they know about you all the time. So you've constantly got something coming out, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of artists make an album, then go away and spend six months writing another one instead. And then, so for six months, you, you could be gone in six months, you know. Yeah. It, 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 it's just a dog eat dog business. So you've got to kind of like be willing to kind of be out there working all the time. Thinking about the two year plan, how does that impact upon you with your songwriting and your music producing? You know, because are you, do you just roll along and do it yeah, as, yeah. as it comes? She, uh, or do you sort of say, we need this by? Yeah, yeah I, know, I, know, I know roughly what I've got in the diary next year, gig wise. I say you've got a couple of tours more than a couple. So, yeah, so it doesn't really impact on me. All, all I have to make sure is that the band know the dates and know when they need to be available for shows. Um, music wise, she just lets me do my own thing. Mm. You know, she'll say, well, we should put an album out or a single out. So she'll give me a date when I've got finished by. I normally run close to that date. Literally like the day. <laughs> Past it sometimes? No. Oh! I no, I haven't, I haven't missed the date yet. No. Because that's really happy that I'm going to have to hear about it for the next six months. Because <laughs> she doesn't like to lose anything. anything. You've got, no, you kind of already got to this, June, in what we were saying about the two year plan and how you've but. Staying creative uh, and, and ensuring that you can, because I'm assuming that you don't write songs to order, it's very much a sort of, you get that sort of mojo, if you like, you get that yeah, inspiration yeah, and it yeah. comes, so how would you sort of schedule that with, with your two year plan, Charlotte? How would that sort of all work? Well, I've, yeah, I've always got music sitting around, so uh, maybe not fully formed songs, but I've always got ideas that I can dip into, I've got yeah. part of ideas, so. But I write quite sporadically, so I might write for two or three weeks and then not write anything for a month. Just as and when the you know the, the kind of feeling takes mm. a little bit, but I kind of stick to Charlotte's schedule. I have to, you know, because otherwise I'll be letting <laughs> letting the team down. So, uh, but uh, again, we we um, I will send Charlotte demos and I'll, I'll ask her opinion on, on stuff, and she will say I think this is a single, I think this is the strongest one out of the bunch, you know, because it's always nice to get you know somebody mm. else's viewpoint on on the songs. So yeah, like I say, schedule wise, I'll stick to it. I have to stick to it. It's, it's so subjective though, isn't it? It's interesting when it comes to, because I was going to say, I asked you and you said that, you know, would you send it to Charlotte? Mm -hmm. Would it, Would she sort of give it the thumbs up, thumbs down, or sort of this season? Oh yeah, she's fairly honest. Fair, yeah. yeah. I think you have to be, because otherwise, you know, you're not really doing anybody any favours by, by blowing smoke up. So no. Proverbial. No. But interesting, how does that, how does that feel? Because you've then essentially got to take a song from Stuart and say, but actually, Stuart's been boring his heart out into this, so... It, it doesn't matter. That, that's the relationship we've got, you know. I, right. I can be honest with him and just like, no, I don't like that. Um, you know, and if, and if he chooses to go with it, then so be it. But it's, you know, that's my job, to tell him what's not working or what I didn't like. Or, you know, because I've got to sell it as well. Um, mm. but, it, but, no, it doesn't matter to us. We, we can be honest and I'm just like... No. Yeah, but I think that, that goes back to that, I mean, that fixed game mentality and not taking yeah. anything too personally. Yeah. If she says I don't really feel, I'm not really feeling that song, then I know, okay, that's, you know, you take it on board. And, you know, but if I feel really strongly about it, I, I would push, you know, for it to listen to it again, or you know, give it a bit of time to, you know, because some, some some things take a while to, to grow. Yeah, yeah. And there was a, there's a several songs that I've been sent that I've heard the first time and thought, mm, and then you hear it again, mm -hmm. because you can pick up a little bit of something from it and you think, oh, that was so you then and, and yeah, it's a, you can. Learn to like something, and, and because it maybe needs more than one lesson, because maybe it's more complex than, than just one lesson. With um, I guess mainly to you, Stuart, but Charlotte as well. Uh, as the final question, what would you say to anybody who wants to work in the music industry? <laughs> um, don't say don't. <laughs> I think I think if you believe in something enough, then you, then then go for it. But just be willing to understand that. It's a hard, hard business, you know. Not everybody gets where they need to be. There's thousands upon thousands of musicians that have been left by the wayside because they either couldn't handle the industry or, you know, just didn't. They thought it was going to be something different. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. It's not glamorous. It's not. Um, it's 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 a hard, hard industry to, to you know to work in. I think that you've got to be willing to absolutely work your hardest. You know, and 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 I always been one of the. You've got to work hard on the next man. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you've got to be willing to go that extra mile that somebody else wouldn't do. You know, and that's what sets you apart from everybody else, I think. I think you've got to live and breathe it for more sacrifice. Yeah, you know, like yeah. If you don't have that passion, that drive, I mean, you probably yes, I mean, certainly for me, it's not a job, it's a way of life. Mm. You know, I live and breathe every, you know, music every day. So if I'm not listening to music, I'm writing and recording, I'm playing it live. You know, so every day I'm looking to what, I, what can I create you know, tomorrow, the next day, and, you know, to, to further myself on in my career. Mm. Charlotte? You just manage Stuart, or do you still manage other people as well? Just, yeah. Just, just Stuart yeah. is a full time job, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Too busy to manage it well. <laughs> Would you have any hints or tips? Just, I guess, with any business, treat it like a business, because mm. I think a lot of people come into it and just expect it all to be given to them, um, expect an easy road, and it, it's not like that at all. So I think work ethic and professionalism, definitely. Um, yeah, and just, just go for it. Yeah, because I think from the outside, certainly I used to think this, it doesn't much look like you're, uh, you just get up there with your guitar and you play your own songs and it's all nice and lovely and beautiful and broad, <laughs> but there's so much beneath that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably the conclusion I've come to from, from talking to you two today is that yes, you probably do need a manager to be successful because you need, you, you need the time, I'm, I'm guessing, to be free to, to create, to uh -huh. do your, to, to play your Yeah, I mean, I certainly need a manager. You know, for me to, to move further on in, in the business, I, I need a manager, you know, and, and I think I've got the best, in my opinion, the best in the business, you know, so I can't imagine ever working with anybody else. No. Great. Can you imagine working with anybody else? No. You sure? I, I totally miss it's a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a real honour, and um, we'll see each other again soon, I'm sure. Cheers, thank you. Cheers, thank you. Taking it back.